emotionally and work really hard on being good at you. Healthy mind, healthy body, healthy life. So food on Smooth 98.1. Okay. Yes, we're ready for soul food here on Smooth 98.1. Love music, love life. We are ready and so ready for you. I have said that about three times, so you should know that you have to join us on YouTube, by the way. That allows you to see our faces. That is my face and that of our guest. And also save the video and maybe even share it with somebody who needs to be a part of it. Aside that, that also allows you to drop your comments in the chat option. So... It's a two-way thing for you. You get to see and also participate and maybe also communicate with us. Now, if you also want to ask any question towards the end of the show or maybe in the middle of it, you can uh, send your WhatsApp messages to 0809-444-0981. Again, 0809-444-0981. While you can call 01-448-9981. I said it that it is the Hamatan season, even though climate change is somehow messing with us. Us, and it looks like we're gradually drawing to the end of the cold, but we are definitely not doing away with the dust anytime soon. So I think it is okay for us to talk about acute respiratory infection. And this morning I have my guest who's a medical doctor and medical influencer, someone who's just so passionate about educating you and making sure you do not take the right, wrong drugs. You do not go and uh, inculcate a health habit based on wrong information. So he is doing justice to that this morning. Please make welcome my guest joining me via Zoom. His name is Dr. Olushino Ajidang. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Thank you for being my guest this morning. It's a pleasure. The pleasure is all mine. So to save the time, let's just lay the background first and understand what acute respiratory infection is. Okay, all right. So thank you for that question. So acute respiratory infection, I think it would be good to define the terminology because I know you have a lot of non-medical audience. And so we just break it down so everyone will remember. So usually when we say the word acute in medicine, acute means of short duration. So that's what acute means. So when we say something is acute, it means of short duration. Respiratory, respiratory means has to do with the airway. So respiratory has to do with anything in the airway. And when we say the airway, the airway starts from the nostrils, down to what we call the larynx, which is your windpipe, the trachea, then to your lungs, which is that thing that really pushes um, air out and um, in. Then infection, obviously, we know an organism is coming to cause something. So put it together, acute respiration is just basically an infection of the airways, which is of short onset, simple. I think that's the simplest definition anyone can give. I agree. It is very simple. Okay, <laughs> so... How does this happen? What are the causes? Oh, no, before we even get to the causes, what are the symptoms? Mm -hmm. Aside the fact that I am guessing it interferes with your breathing and it causes that congestion or maybe the discomfort in your chest. What are the other symptoms? Okay. Now, one thing is when we talk about acute respiratory infection, we, we usually like to categorize it into two, into two types. Because um, if you look at the airway, it's, it's, we can have it, we have what we call the upper airway and the lower airway. And so, to help us delineate symptoms when we see patients because the way upper respiratory tract infections will present are different from the way lower respiratory tract infections, which they are both acute respiratory infections. I'll just come to that shortly. Now, anything from above the, what we call, um, I, I'm trying to use short term. So above the trachea, that is upper respiratory tract infection. So anything from the nose, you go to your sinus, to your larynx, you understand there's something larynx is that windpipe that long thing that has like line 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 like that's larynx. <laughs> okay. above that we call it upper respiratory tract infection so anything below that so from your trachea the way you, the two things that branch out called the bronchi and the lungs everything below that is lower respiratory tract infection so mm -hmm. i usually just for um for context usually when we have infections of different parts of this um um, um, body, we, we, we usually use the word IT. So IT means like inflammation, it's a reaction, in, uh, you understand? So if going up, if someone has sinusitis, so if you have infection of the sinus, we call it sinusitis. 
You understand? If someone has inflammation of the bronchial cord, bronchiolitis and all that, then let's go down. So from what I just explained now, the one above, you see what we have. We have your sinus there, so sinusitis. We have your, epi, your, your epiglottis, well, epiglottitis, all that are things up there. Then Just when you entices. go down, yes. When you now go down, we have the bronchioles, which are those two things that feed the lungs with air. If you have bron a bronchial problem, you call it bronchitis. Then when you have infection of the lungs, you call that pneumonia. So the lung is, we don't want to say pneumonitis. Well, pneumonitis. <laughs> well, it's kind of different for the context of this discussion. So we call it pneumonia. So how do they yeah. present? Now, for upper respiratory airway infection, uh, now, common way they present one, nasal discharge, because now, like I said, we're starting from the nose, mm -hmm. right? So problems with breathing, the person is having a um, nasal discharge or fever. Once the body has an um, infection, there's some um, fever. In, it's, it's like a response to an infection. Also cough. So usually the airway, cough is a protective reflex. Once there's something, something foreign, in the airway, the body wants to get it all out, so the person starts to cough. If we go down, so when we talk about like going down, let's the one of the common ones is pneumonia. So when one has a pneumonia, one of the ways it's a person can have fever, cough, chest pain, and some of pe some people can also produce or cause sputum. So what people call saliva, it's something it's it's you coughing it out of the chest. We we'll call it sputum, not saliva. And depending on the cause, you can have it bloody and all that. So it's a spectrum of symptoms. So fever, itchy nose weakness, headaches, body pain, and cough, and some other non-specific symptoms, which I'm sure we'll probably explore later. Thank you. Thank you very much. While you mentioned that sputum, I think I will quickly ask a question to you further shed a light on it. So when you have the common cold, Qatar, mm -hmm. as the case may be, it is usually said that you should not take dairy product because they tend to increase your sputum secretion. Is there any truth to that? Oh, well, oh, well, um, I really don't think there's any truth to that. But the thing is that I think the, the I'm just hearing that for the first time. That you should really? Not take yes. Yeah. I, I feel that that stems from allergies because, you know, some people have, um, I've, 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 I might be wrong, but I'm just trying to see why they say don't take dairy products. You know, a lot of times when people have, um, well, say common cold or something like oh, allergic rhinitis, it's, some of these people can have allergies to dairy products also. So I feel that maybe it's just to um, say, just to be very sure, but I don't think there's any rule that says if we have common cold, don't take dairy products. I'm just saying that for the first time. Mm, okay. So what about the other side? This one is for my Yoruba people. They tell you to take lots of pepper so that it helps you to expel <laughs> and expunge um, all the sputum so that you feel relieved. Any truth to that? Okay, so I don't think there's, I know that I'm not, I'm not going to change what our, our parents have been saying, but scientifically, I don't think there's any scientific basis to say take um, pepper to induce cough. Like I said earlier, cough is a protective reflex. Now, mm. why, why, why we all cough is that it's something to protect you. It's a, it's a response that the body is saying, um, oh, there's, there's something in my, I'm infected. There's something negative there. So get it all out. That is why there's cough. So you really don't have to stimulate that cough with pepper. Your body's going to cough out. You're going to cough out whatever it's, it, it's in there or is a sign of infection. So I wouldn't say people should take pepper to, um, you know, get cough and all that. So I don't think I agree with that notion. All right. Thank you very much for laying that to rest. I hope somebody agrees with it or maybe a grandmother or a grandfather or somebody who has been practicing ancestral medicine is still disagreeing with it but it's okay you can come with your thoughts on whatsapp 0809-444-0981 we'll take a quick break now and when we come back we will go more into some of the causes of the acute respiratory infection and how you can treat or maybe prevent it this is smooth 98.1 So we have a minute break. Okay, okay. And we come back after that. Okay, okay. So uh, just to piggyback off your question, although, even though it's a total digression, you mentioned something about it's your body. So the cough is saying something foreign is there and it needs to expunge it. So in the case of diarrhea, maybe you have food poisoning. Your body is saying, okay, I have eaten something I shouldn't. There is an infection and I'm purging myself. Does that also mean, because I think I have come across it saying you don't need to take drugs to stop that 
and let the body yes. take you. Yes. Uh, so when people have diarrheal diseases, the thing is, what we are trying to do is we just want to replace the food. We, we, we don't say what to give something like, a lot of people take Lomotil, Lomotil, to stop the diarrhea. No, because that is very, very dangerous. There are reasons why we give anti-diarrhea. But if someone comes with a diarrhea disease, we are not trying to stop the diarrhea because the body is saying there's something going on, you understand? So we just stay reagent, give fluids and all that. Okay, we'll come back. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I just dropped a gem for you on YouTube. So if you're part of our YouTube stream, I think that question, you will find it really beneficial because I asked a question that was different from what we were talking about, even though it, it's related going to that explanation on the cough being your body's response to something foreign in your body and your body trying to respond to it. So that's why you should be a part of the YouTube stream. I'll give you to you again, youtube.com forward slash smooth 981 FM Lagos. By now you should be subscribed. And if not, just click on the notification bell as well as the subscribe button. So we're talking about acute respiratory infections. And my guest this morning is Dr. Olushino. He's a medical doctor and also a medical influencer. Before the break, he explained what acute respiratory infections are, the upper and also the lower, and some of the titis involved. You have the bronchitis, you have the laryngitis, the sinusitis. I'm a good student. So uh, he's also talked about the symptoms and some things that happen, saying that fever is your body trying to fight off. And maybe we should also quickly let them hear from you why we need to stop self-medicating anytime we get fever symptoms so that we're not suppressing what is supposed to be an alarm of our body yes 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 okay yes like you said I, and as i said earlier fever is a physio, is what we call a physiologic response it's the body trying to tell you i am fighting a lot of things are dying i'm killing a lot of things so you don't really when you have a fever it's not every time you just say you want to pop paracetamol you understand that sometimes some of these things will just die on. Yes, there might be reasons when we have we have um, different set points for fever. There might be sometimes when we are we see the fever is above or maybe some degrees. Yes, we might intervene. But people should not just say anytime they feel or oh, a little bit fevery they want to pop pills because it's a response and you don't have to kill that response. Thank you. Thank you. So let's talk about how you can. Okay, let's first talk about, you, you've mentioned some of the causes, but I think I'm particularly interested in the prevention of this infections. And this is one of the reasons why I ask it. This Monday, which is 9th of January, the kids are going to go back to school. Yeah. And if you have any children around you, which I'm guessing you probably get to have the children come to you first before you refer them to the pediatrician. It's like yeah. there is this sore meat on cold and cough <laughs> they always have in their schools which never mm -hmm. almost, it never stops. I have nephews and it's as if all through the session, they tend to come home with this recurring cough and cold. So how do you prevent this acute respiratory infections? Okay, thank you very much for that question. So prevention is it stems from the understanding of what causes it. Now the various causes of um, um, it, acute upper respir acute respiratory infection, the commonest is the viruses. And we know viruses are everywhere. And um, of which one very common one is the influenza virus. And it's, 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 it's responsible for a lot of cases. But we also have um, bacteria also, we have bacterial causes also. Then depending on, in some severe cases, so like in people that maybe have um, HIV or things that reduce the immune system, we can mm -hmm. have other things like fungi and other organisms causing that. So how do we prevent that? For example, influenza, let's take, a, um, let's take a, for example, in children, you know, viruses, many of these things spread by direct contact. Children are always playing, they're always touching, they're always doing that. So it's so easy to spread from person to person. In some countries like um, US, you know, usually have outbreaks. So something like influenza now, they have outbreak because you, you also have, um, you know, various strains and they always have vaccination where well, we really don't give influenza the flu vaccine here in Nigeria but some countries where it's really a big deal they actually have flu vaccines as something they go for um, um, you know regularly and another thing is um, so usually the first thing is contact limit contact and all that so children well even though they are playing and all that you know um, there should there should be some form of like barrier you understand like just enlighten the children another one is on hygiene many of these things also 
they are spread when places are dirty and all that. Adequate aeration, viruses and all this are always going to be in the air and all that. But if we have well-ventilated adequate aeration, it will reduce the chances of people having um, upper respiratory infection, um, acute respiratory infection. Another thing is identifying and isolating contact. Something like this virus. So if you, if you have a child in school is having running nose fever and all that, the child should go to the sick bay because something like if it's a virus, it can you know spread to other children and its viruses really spread very well. Also, adequate eating, nutrition is very important. A lot of this, a lot of us have been exposed to some of this thing, but we don't come down with it because our body's immune system are very very strong. So people should eat very well during this period. People should drink a lot of water, ensure adequate hydration is very important, and you know, keep fit. I think that's a way um, of prevention. With the face mask, well, COVID also is another one that we know it's coming in. So uh, face mask, a lot, a lot of people don't wear face masks now, but depending if you work in the hospital setting, we still, work, we still wear face masks because we don't want to have you know, some of these organisms just um, getting to us. So I think all in all, um, this is a quick summary of how we can actually prevent accurate respiratory infection. And another thing is, if you have some of these symptoms, go to a hospital because it's a spectrum. If you don't treat some of these things, they can get worse and you know lead to other serious causes. So if you're having some of these things, don't just sit at home popping pills and self-medicating. Go to a doctor, let them run their labs on you and let them treat you appropriately. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me take you back to one thing you said while you were explaining. You said we don't give flu vaccine here. Is there a reason? Is it because that our, our body is so resistant to it or we're just fine? Well, black people. Okay, we, well, the reason is that we really don't have outbreak of influenza here. Usually okay. most of the countries that give vaccines are countries that have um out they could have outbreak. And that's because of the way the flu the um influ the influenza virus is it's with period, with seasonal changes, it just comes like a boom. You understand with that it's just like the way we had the covid outbreak you understand that's mm -hmm. how it is it just comes like a bone and you know it can infect a lot of people and the thing is that usually the the, the organism is is um kind of undergoes a lot of change so the strain that caused the disease in 2022 can be different from 2023 it could have mutated in 2024 so you re you really need to start to keep on having the vaccination because the strains keep changing but we really don't have a lot of um flu outbreak here in Nigeria. And that's why we don't really um, go for yearly flu vaccine. Some countries every year, you need to take your flu shots. Okay. But I would like to break it down to someone who doesn't have any medical knowledge whatsoever and would like to understand it better. So the weather change, which is the Hamatan, you, okay. you will agree with me that we tend to have more people having common colds during the Hamatan season. So yes. what happens there? Okay, now one thing is that, um, thank you for that question. Now, one thing is that for viruses and some bacteria, a lot of them spread well when the, the air is, is dry, humid and all that. So some organisms spread by what we call droplet spread. Now that means they are able to be carried easily by air. So when we have things like amatan, those viruses, those um, what we call respiratory borne organisms are easily spread because you know, during amatan, the air is so dry, and this is so windy. And so imagine someone coughs, it's so easy to spread from one person to another. So that's why usually during the Amatan period, like we are now, it's usually the um, point where we see a lot of respiratory disease, not even only respiratory infection. There mm. are other things, other outbreaks for other diseases of the airways you could have. And that's because the air helps in spreading a lot of these diseases. <laughs> okay, very true. Somebody coughs at one end and the other, and the virus is just doing fly away, Peter, fly away, Paul, and before you know it, you catch it. What about the role of vitamin C in preventing or treating? Because I don't think it is possible to convince anyone to stop taking vitamin C during a cough or a kata bout. So what is the role of vitamin C in fighting or preventing cold and those okay. infections? Okay. Um, now, thank you very much for that question. One thing I do, I didn't, I, I, I've not yet spoken about treatment is that a lot of times when you have diseases caused by viruses, you do what we call a supportive treatment. Now, supportive treatment means you're just helping the body. You're not really giving a drug to destroy the virus. You're just building up the body, hoping the body will you know, you know, get up and clear the virus itself. 
So usually now something like vitamin C. Now vitamin C is an antioxidant. What vitamin C does is just it just helps with the immunity. It's not if vitamin C is killing the virus. No, vitamin C is just helping the body antioxidant. What antioxidants do is, you know, as the body is working and all that, there are some things called oxidants which are like dangerous to the body and can destroy the body that are generated, I mean, physiologically. So antioxidants just help to mop up those things. So basically, it's not, it's not like if you take vitamin C, it does not mean you can't have common cold. But what it would, vitamin C would do is, it acts as an antioxidant, which also is helping your immunity to be able to fight infection. So it's not like vitamin C will prevent you from having um, um, common cold. But if you have common cold, because you're taking maybe vitamin C, other supplement and other antioxidants, there's a higher chance that you'll be able to fight the infection maybe faster than someone that maybe has a, a, a problem with their immune system. Mm. In other words, while you have a cold, will the vitamin C shorten the duration or no matter what you do, it will run its course? Yes, it will run its course, yes. But vitamin C can just help your body. And, you know, it's not only vitamin C you're eating well because... It's, if, you, if it's a viral infection, like I specifically say viral, because if it's bacterial, you might need something. If it's a viral infection, the body is going to mount up. That's why see, if you have a common cold, you don't, you don't get anything. You are just at home eating well, and in like three days, it disappears. That's because the body is going to fight off the virus. You're not going to start taking drugs to kill um, the virus. So you just eat well, supplement, take supplements and all that. Well, your body is going to do the trick. You don't have to really stress yourself, except there are complications. Can you overdose on vitamin C consumption? All right, nice question. Yes, you can overdose, but a lot of people don't know this. Yes, you can overdose on vitamin C consumption. Yes, vitamin C is water soluble. Water soluble means the body can excrete it so easily, but there's a limit to the amount of vitamin C you should take. Because now this is why, because vitamin C is um, excreted by the kidneys, if you don't take, say, take enough water, especially, you can actually have kidney stones. If you take a lot, in quote, I'm not saying one tablet a day, a lot of vitamins, usually like- You'd have to kidney. put it in context too. Yes, How much is too much? Okay. Yeah, usually, usually we don't want people to take more than three grams a day, three grams of vitamin C a day. And even if you take vitamin C, you need to take enough water because if you don't, vitamin C increases your risk of having a kidney stone and that can cause kidney damage. And this is very important in people, especially people that have kidney diseases, you have to be very careful with vitamin C in them. So if we have someone that has, say, a chronic kidney disease now, the person has a higher chance of having a kidney stone if they are dosing so much on vitamin C. So people should know that. I'm not saying people should not take vitamin C. Obviously, it's water soluble, the water, water will excrete it. But don't overdose on it and make sure you take enough water, keep hydration because the body needs to, the kidney needs to be well perfused you understand and if you don't do that you can have kidney stones from taking excess vitamin c and the kidney stones can damage the kidneys i still want to break it down again because kidney stone doesn't sound very pretty so three grams of vitamin c what does it look like how many oranges do i have to take for me to meet up to three grams how many tablets of vitamin c do i have to take mm -hmm. to have that three grams because i okay. know all right okay. go ahead okay. no i'm with you i'm with you please go ahead Okay, now when I say um, um, three grams, I mean like people that are taking tablets. So now, okay. in natural, naturally, we don't really need to take vitamin C, like say take everything, because a lot, from a lot of things you eat, you already have vitamin C. Your fruits, some foods, and your citrus, all those things, you already have vitamin C. So really, do you really need to be supplementing vitamin C? If you are taking enough fruits and all that, your vitamin C is in all those things. You do, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about those that still go and stack up vitamin C tablets and just be taking them as if they are chewing gum. You understand? And you know, most um, of the tablets, we have sometimes we have 200 milligram tablet, 500 milligram, mm -hmm. and some will come in one gram. So if you do that, there's some like, so if it's a one gram tablet now, if someone takes three tablets, that's already three grams. You understand? If it's a 200 milligram tablet, that's going to be like 15 tablets. If it's 500 milligram tablet, that's going to be like six tablets. So that's three grams already. Okay, so please, you heard that you need to take more water and first check what you're taking. I know someone who she doesn't like to drink water, 
So what helps her drink? Yeah, there are a number of people who do not like the taste of water, which makes no sense to me. They say water is tasteless and they, they don't like it. So in order for her to drink water, she puts something funky in her water. It could be a little yeah. splash of ACV. It could be all those funky vitamin C tablet that you have in those slim packs. I'm guessing you know the one I'm talking about. So yeah. she just keeps dropping it, yeah. So now you know you have to take more water. Please do not give yourself kidney stones while you're trying to be healthy. We'll take a last break. And when we come back, we will take your questions. You know how to be a part of it. If not, 0809-444-0981 is the WhatsApp line. And I might have the space for just one call. So the line to call is 01-448-9981. But Limitless is YouTube. So youtube.com forward slash smooth 921 FM Lagos. Drop your question or your comments there in the chat box option. So we have just about three more minutes. I have a question. I, uh, somebody has a question. I think I have answered it, but for the sake of clarity, maybe we'll just go over it again. The person is asking why most of his friends and staff tend to develop sore throats during the season. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is M.I. Mr. Incredible. And music to me is love, it is life, it is harmony. Love music, love life, smooth and new framework. You're welcome to your Love Music, Love Life radio station. This is Smooth 98.1. The segment you're listening to right now is called Soul Food. And every Saturday from 8 to 8.30, we talk about your health and wellness, even while you are in bed. Or maybe you're jogging or you're driving to that place. You need to quickly get something. We tend to talk about it so that you get educated and you start your week on a good and fresh note. We're taking your questions right now very very fast if you can 0809-444-0981 is the whatsapp line again 0809-444-0981 and you can call 01-448-9981 gary well done i see your message but i will take the question you're asking he's saying i have noticed that most of my friends and fa- and staff develop sore throats within the season. Why is that? Funny thing is, these groups of person are nowhere near each other. I think you have answered it, but just for the sake of clarity, you can go over it again. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Dyer, for your question. Now, um, I explained earlier, um, you know, sore throats, usually what we call it, we call it pharyngitis. And like I said, itis, itis, itis. So yeah. pharynx, that um, part of your, is just close to the airway. And also, um, from what I explained earlier, a lot of these things, um, find, a lot of pharyngitis is caused by an organism called, is a bacteria called streptococci, and we also have some viruses. And like I explained earlier, the droplet split, spread, easy spread from person to person. And during this period, we spoke about amatans, the way the wind is, and it can also help to spread infection and direct contact from person to person. So diary, don't be surprised because we are in amatan period, it's windy, and you might see more of that. So what you need to tell your staff is that, Make sure they um, eat very well. Well, ensure their offices are well aerated. I think that should suffice. Thank you. Um, does AC count for aeration? Because most offices, don't, I don't think they open their windows. So the mm-hmm. AC basically just circulates the air everybody's breathing. Well, yes, AC counts as good aeration. But maybe another time, maybe if, if I'm invited again, is there's some there's a specific organism that can actually cause infections in people that stay a long time in AC. It's, it's not very common. But usually people should try and you know clean up their vents and, and all that regularly because of that particular. It's called Legionella. I'm sure people people can actually read about it. It's very specific for causing infections in people that maybe stay in AC from you understand, like hotels and all those kind of things, always in AC, it's something like you can find in, in them. But I think we'll talk about that another time. Yeah, and I'll be glad to have you again talk about it another time. Before we let you go for this time, here is Tentic Lifestyle on YouTube saying, how can one reduce the production of mucus? Okay, okay. Nice question. Don't reduce the production of mucus. 
because if you're having a lot of mucus, it's just like I explained earlier, is your body trying to push out something? Your body is saying, oh, there's an infection. Something is wrong. I just need to get it all out. You understand? So you really don't have, there are some, there are some conditions where the doctor might say, okay, we need to break your mucus down and all that. But if you're having something and you're having a lot of mucus, let all the mucus, let it all come out. That's your body responding. Don't, because if you start taking cough um, syrup like people do, and you stop that reflex, the, the mucus will keep keeping up in your keep accumulating in your chest. A bacteria can act on that mucus and the person can have a very terrible pneumonia. So it is not every time you take cough, cough syrup. That is very, very important. So let your body spit out the mucus, just leave it like that. Titi, thank you. Thank you for the explanation and thank you for all that you have shared the light on. I have one last question. I know I said that was the last question, but steam. I don't know if I should call it steam bath. You know that thing that we do, we pull maybe eucalyptus oil or we put some, some things, some things that have menthol inside that hot water and we put some other extra ingredients as advised by the ancestors. And then we use our towel to cover ourselves just to help the cold or fight of infections. How effective is it? Is it advisable and can you overdo it? Okay, um, well, I don't think it's not a bad one because these are supportive things. This um, steaming is just help you to, you know, um, it should just, um, just ensure something is getting to the airway to just relax. And all these are safe. These are what we call supportive home based care. It's not like um, they have like strong medical backing, but it's been shown to help. Like I said, if it's a virus, what you're just doing is supportive. You're not really doing anything much. So these are things that could um, work. But you need to be very careful because now for something like mental, um, some people can have some allergies and some people could have what we call GCSPD deficiency and um, it could really not be very advisable in them because when you take out taking some of these things it can actually cause hemolysis of their it can actually cause breakdown of their red blood cells so usually I care people that use the aboniki um, rub and all those things it's, it might not be saving there are some classes of people called, that we say they have a, a problem called GCSPD deficiency as well let me just leave that out, but it's not something bad, but you don't overdo it also. Yes, so mm, I'll, I'll say that. And while we're on that, I know I have heard it, but again, I want to hear from you. Uh, is there a, an age range for those who can use the menthol? Because I know it shouldn't be used maybe on kids below two years old. Okay, well, yes. Well, I'm not a pediatrician. I'm, so I might not be able to give um, age cut off. But one thing is, um, well, there for mental, you need to be careful, especially those set of people I could say they have GCSPD deficiency. I think when you say mental, you mean things like Rob, Aboniki, right? Is that, is that what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because of these people, because they have and an enzyme is not in their red blood cells, if they're exposed to things like Aboniki and Rob, their red blood cells start to break and they start having, you know, their urine becomes like coke, like dark colored. So it's not safe in this kind of people. But usually also all these abonic and stuff are for external use, but people, you see people putting it in their nose. It is not for internal use. There are bombs that maybe you have muscle pain, you can rub those things outside. You should not have it inside. You should not put it inside your nose. They are very, very dangerous, whether you even have this video or not. So I think people need to cultivate that habit of stop putting abonic and rub inside your nose, it is very, very dangerous. Thank you very much. And we'll send your invoice for all the brand names that have been mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> well, please always check what you're buying, especially the menthol containing product. Please be careful. Most times when you see on the bottles for external use only, but Nigerians, we just lend, we, I don't know how we got to that place where we discard information and do what is in us. So please be careful, stop putting it into your nose. Thank you again so much for your time and knowledge shared this morning. If people want to check out Dr. Sheena on WhatsApp, no, not WhatsApp now, on social media, how can they do that? Okay, so I'm very, very active. I have a large following on Twitter. So you can just go to at the bearded Sheena. I, mean, I create a lot of health content, a lot of, um, I host health session, health conversation, health spaces. And I also have a Telegram channel. I usually upload that on Twitter. So if you just follow me, 
I'm sure you would not miss up to date health content. You'll get it. Also, I'm trying to relaunch for Instagram. I'm, I've been shooting videos also. So I'll be relaunching this month on Instagram and all that. And I'm also, my DMs are usually open also to take questions, especially on Twitter. If you have issues, you can actually send me a message. Well, sometimes it comes to the feed, but well, I mean, <laughs> some things I post up to you. Bearded, you know, at the underscore bearded S I N A. I mean, you'll just see my handle. I'll be glad to follow you back. Just ask for a follow back. Thank you very much. Thank you. You can check him on Twitter, Dr. Shino with the beard. That's B-E-A-R-D-E-D, Breaded Shino, and you will find him there. Reach out with your questions, clarifications. Do not self-medicate. It's okay for you to pay for things relating to your health and wellness because, man, I don't know, if you do not pay for that, what will you pay for? So please, <laughs> prevention is always less expensive than kill. Again, thank you so much for being my guest this morning. We'll save this video for you. We'll save it on our WhatsApp status and you can go there to catch up on it, share with your family and friends like we always say because health is wealth. You need to enjoy 2023 and for that to happen, you need to be healthy in one piece. On the other side, I will have the kids come to me on the show called Curious Mind. So please stay tuned. This is Smooth 98.1. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I definitely look forward to another conversation. So I'll reach out. All right. right. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. And you too.